Hello there, we're going to do a Dutch bucket comparison video today. Now originally I was going to do a build out using both a store purchase cat litter container or some something similar uh, versus the commercially available uh, Dutch buckets. But going through the whole design process, I've settled on doing just one of these. These videos are brought to you by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are aquaponics.ai, growpockets.com, trueaquaponics.com, and glassbottleoutlet.com. Thanks for your support. Before I get too far into this, just as a disclaimer, I'm sort of basing my pricing off of a small commercial setup. Uh, this setup will have 20 buckets when I'm done with it. Um, if you're buying one or two, the numbers are going to be a little bit different. So with this traditional uh, Beto bucket, uh, they build a notch into this because most places uh, set their piping right on the ground floor. Um, I'm going to be uh, setting mine on a stand because my sump is higher than the ground, um, but we'll cover that a little bit later. And these buckets have a um, drain plug in, built right into them, so if I had a hole in this, it would just set right over the hole and you can set the buckets right on there and everything stays right on the ground. Now internally, there is a little uh, plumbing fitting in here that's used to uh, suck the water up off the bottom of the bucket just to help with the circulation. But there's always going to be a couple inches of water um, in these buckets all the time. Now my cost for this with the fitting in there, including the shipping, came to be uh, $10 and two cents. So that's not too bad uh, on a per bucket basis. If you had to buy a bucket like this, it's about uh, $6 or so. Um, so I'm including that in the price because once you uh, get into like 20 buckets, you're gonna have to buy a bucket anyways, unless you're saving a long time for cat litter. Or you, you know a cat person that has lots of buckets like this. Uh, but for about $6, you can buy uh, similar buckets. Internally, you need a couple of elbows that will be used, uh, one inside the bucket to suck the water off the bottom, and then one that will go into here. Of course, a little piece of piping um, to interconnect all your parts. And then also a grommet, um, sort of acts like a uni seal where it gets uh, drilled into the side of the bucket and then the piping can come through and um, it won't leak out. So between that, the elbows are another dollar. Uh, about 40 cents in uh, piping and the grommet was 67 cents. So what really gets you though is these buckets aren't UV treated at all so they're gonna rot out fairly quickly so you, they should be painted or covered with something. A can of spray paint that can cover plastic is a little over six dollars so I packed in two dollars per bucket so a can could cover uh, three buckets. Uh, they really should be painted so you don't want to um, exclude that from your pricing. So the price for this setup comes to be $10.07. Now, of course, it's only $4.07 if you can get your own buckets. Um, so you're saving uh, six times 20. That's $120 that you're saving in buckets if you're doing a 20 bucket setup. So that part adds up, but what I didn't factor into this is the amount of labor it's gonna take to put all this together and make sure it fits. Uh, plus, they don't fit directly over this, so you have to set everything side by side and then have your drain come in. And we'll cover that in a minute um, on how buckets are usually configured on over your piping like this. So typically what happens with your bucket layouts is you set them up alternating going down a row so that way you uh, can space out your plants a little bit and you can utilize the same drain line between uh, your two rows of buckets. When you're on the ground, that works great, but once you need to set it up on a pedestal or platform, um, it gets a little bit more complicated with the build out. So usually what happens is there's some type of a bench that the buckets can sit on up at an elevated spot. And just as a demonstration, each end of the bucket would sit on the pipe and then the other side of the bucket is supported by the drain line itself. It makes it very efficient um, with materials to set it up this way. Now with using a regular bucket, you can set it on the, the railing, but there's nothing supporting this end of the bucket anymore because you don't have that lip uh, supporting over the piping. 
So that changes the whole infrastructure of this where now I either have to set up two rails on each side to hold the buckets. I've seen a lot of people, they'll put uh, planking down instead and that will add in price. If you've seen the current price of lumber, it gets really expensive real quick. Just by having this little overhang on here with the supporting through here, changes the complete dynamics of the infrastructure of how to do um, a setup like this. Now again, if these were just sitting on the ground, you don't need any of the, the bench part of it, so you can just have your plumbing come into here. Um, so if you were gonna stay on the ground, your ground was slightly soaked for the drain line, you could easily get away with doing buckets like this. But these have been very well designed on uh, how to save space and money with uh, building out your structure for supporting everything. I spent a little time and welded and painted up this steel frame out of some extra tubing that I had and that will hold the buckets nicely. Put them on these concrete blocks just to do a, a rough layout of the uh, area. Um, it's going to need to be a little bit higher so I can drain it properly. But just to show, this pipe will then sit right on top of the frame like this and then the, the buckets will sit on top of the pipe once I get the holes uh, drilled into it. My deep water culture bed is the sump for this system. I don't have anything down underground so that's why uh, this has to get raised up high enough so that it can drain down into this uh, sump. So we'll just sort of use our pipe as a guide give us a visual level and start throwing some blocks under here and that should be enough slope to get this to drain properly I'm just gonna temporarily set some more bricks in here just to support it now if I set all these at a height of three the whole thing's going to be leveled I want it uh, tapering down towards the drain a little bit so if I put three on the end Maybe three and one on its side will raise this up another inch. And then the equivalent of four down there, I should get a nice tapered uh, slope to this. Actually, I think that looks pretty good. You can eyeball it down and make sure it's still relatively straight, which it is. So I think that will work out well for a slight taper down. In my drain pipe, I've drilled one inch holes for each bucket and they're spaced 12 inches apart. So when they're alternating, the buckets on each side will be spaced uh, 24 inches apart, which would be plenty of room uh, for tomato plants or cucumbers. For now, I'm just gonna dry fit the rest of the drain line together. Once I eventually get the rest of the beds in place in here the plumbing will be a little bit different but I just want to get it out of the way and in over to the side for now. For my water supply line I chose to use rigid pipe. Usually you'll see uh, just flexible tubing running along the top of the buckets and then they'll use one of those piercing adapters to pierce into it. Um, personally not a big fan of that I'm always afraid that they're gonna leak or let go so I opted to uh, put holes in this rigid pipe and thread them and that way I get a nice mechanical bond uh, with these adapters instead. Just to keep everything neat and tidy I made up these little hanger brackets so they can hold the pipe up underneath the shelf like this. The elevation to the outlet of the water is only about four inches lower than the water level for my other beds. I'm going to try to get enough water into there just with that four inches of differential. Um, my other alternative is to install a pump in the sump and then uh, just pump the uh, water into those. But we're going to try it without uh, any extra electricity first. I made up this adapter contraption that gets me from the existing three inch line 
to a valve and then down to a one inch uh, flexible tubing that will get over to the Dutch buckets. So we're just gonna temporarily install that. I put a plug in here because this was supposed to go somewhere else, so it's just a temporary. And then I'll just replug it again. Now we'll just install a barb fitting on this side and be ready for, to connect the hose up. Little side note, if you don't have a set of these PVC pipe cutters, go out and get some. They're worth the $20. couldn't find any hose clamps so when I go out buy shopping later I'll have to uh, pick some up. I'm just gonna temporarily put these on for now. I'm probably gonna he have to heat this pipe up a little bit too to get it to go over that barb fitting. All right let's turn on our water and see if something at least comes out. Now put our buckets in. Instead of using a clip to hold this into place, I'm going to just drill a hole through the side of the bucket. Run that tube through. Now I'll hold it into place. Now before I do the rest of these, I'm gonna actually fill these up with media because it's easier to bring the bucket to my pile instead of bringing the media to the buckets. You'll usually see people using vermiculite or some other media in their Dutch buckets, but I have a whole bunch of expanded shale on hand, so I'm gonna use that. I'm also a little concerned about the roots getting up into the drain pipe so on half of my buckets I'm gonna just put a piece of filter fabric down just to protect that then I can compare at the end of the season if it made any difference or not I started my tomatoes a while ago, so they're ready to get planted. Normally when I put them in the deep water culture bed, I'll rinse the dirt off the roots, but I don't want to damage them at this point, and having a little soil in here is not gonna make much of a difference. This is one of the problems with using emitters with aquaponics. This is a quarter inch line and it's still clogging up with some of the bio slime. For now I'm just blowing these out but I'm going to uh, take these out and go with one of my original ideas and just pump the water out of the deep water culture bed since that's going to be a little bit cleaner. Even though I have a radio flow settle in here that's collecting most of the solids, every so often I'll get a little chunk that floats up to the top. Usually if I don't clean it out often enough, it starts to get some gas bubbles on it and it lifts the solids up. Then it can work its way out through the weir and out into the rest of the system. So these little chunks are getting into that tubing. Normally all the water is coming into the media beds and this is what's catching any little bit of sediment that might be working its way through. And then I have a bunch of composting worms that are in here uh, just helping to break everything down. But since I've added in this line here, it goes directly to the Dutch buckets, I'm not catching all that sediment in time. 
It's been a few more weeks since I've done the install. Everything is running great. I haven't had any more issues with clogging with the lines. Uh, so I've been keeping up with making sure my radio flow settler is working properly. And I also added in a valve into the bottom of the system at the end of the pipe. And that way I can just open that up once in a while and flush any solids that might be accumulating uh, in the pipe. So for now I'm not going to connect this into the deep water culture bed um, and pump it into here. I'll just uh, stick with uh, gravity fed. It, it seems to be doing okay and, and I'm in here every day so I can keep an eye on all the uh, plumbing to make sure that it's still flowing properly. A lot of people usually ask where I buy my equipment from. Uh, these buckets, I purchased them from Crop King. Uh, they were a fair price and they came nice and quick. Uh, they did forget to include just one of these fittings and I contacted them and their support team responded probably within an hour and said they are going to send out the one replacement. So that worked out really well. Even though I had already filled up all the buckets with everything, I can wait until the spring um, next time I do my plant out to install this one little part. So not a big deal that it was missing, but uh, kudos to them for uh, responding quickly and sending out one cheap little part. So that's about all I have for today. I'm looking forward to having some great tomatoes this season out of here. And if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.